Hello, and welcome to the Journey to College Made Easy, where experts help us cut through the complexity, eliminate the stress, and set your child up for success. I am Peg Keough, a college financial planning consultant. I help families navigate the somewhat crazy world of financial aid so that they can save on the cost of college and make sound financial decisions. I'm very happy to be here today with Beth Probst. She is the, the CEO and founder of At The Core. Welcome, Beth. How are you? I am good. Thanks for being here. Thank you. I really oh, no appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. Okay, so why don't we kick this off and uh, why don't you take a couple minutes, just tell us a little bit about yourself and then what you're doing in the college planning space. You bet, you bet. So um, we have to really get in the way back machine um, to, to back in my high school days. I, 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 I won't ask how old you are, Peg, but I graduated from um, high school in Indiana in 1986. So um, headed, uh, I, it was it was kind of not a question in my family that we would go to college, mm -hmm. and um, and I made the um, very big leap of a decision to follow a brother into the exact same major that he was studying, um, which was an information technology major at the university where my parents met. So let's just say not a whole lot of thought process went into that. I was the last kid. I think my parents were like, okay, we're ready for you to go. We're empty nesters. And, um, you know, really, I, I, I loved what I studied. I, um, that was not an issue. I got pretty lucky that way. But we were really all marching toward one specific job to do at, at the end of college. And I quickly understood that that specific job was not going to be a fit. So I had that common crisis that a lot of us have some, at some point in our lives. How am I going to take who I am and what my strongest personal traits are and tie them together to work that I will love? How am mm -hmm. I going to do that? And, um, and I did end up weaving my way through and, and finding my way to, to good work. And then over the years, um, managed people and became an aunt and became a mom. And I watched the cost of college rising and I watched my nieces and nephews start to make that transition with a ton of question marks over their head. H how am I gonna do this? And it was, it was gonna cost so much. And I thought, oh my gosh, my kids are right behind this. And I wanted to help. And so eight years ago, um, I founded At The Core and we now are a growing team serving um, really families nationally with a variety of services that are related to self-assessment and career exploration, as well as educational path planning. Yeah, yeah, and we're gonna talk about that. I think it's really interesting, myself and a bunch of the experts that I've interviewed, where, where we end up doing our work is based on our story and sometimes our kids' story. So you realize there's this need because of your life, you know, so it's it's interesting how we end up in that place. So. For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that. So so let's talk a little bit about some, some statistics that are out there. And I'm guessing that some of our listeners, the parents might be reading some of this too. So the National Center for Education Statistics put out a number that says about 41% of first time students will finish college in four years. And say, 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 say that again, Peg, that one's big, 41%. Yeah, so, yeah 41% of first time college students will finish in four years. At my daughter's school, they called the 50 year super seniors, you know, and I tell parents in the financial part, obviously that is just blowing up your costs. Super you know, bill, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so can you kind of speak to this about what's going on? Also, they say that 50 to 80% of students will change their major at least once. I know my son within business, he changed it like two or three times, you know, so I think kids change it even more than once, but it's pretty common to change it at least once. For sure. So, so I think that stat, when we think about not finishing in four years, I mean, let's just say this right off the top. No one sends their student to a four-year institution to earn a four-year degree. No one's thinking, 
that's going to take six years. That's going to take five and a half years. We're all thinking that's going to take four years. I, I think so just to absorb the fact that that real number of students that will graduate in four years is 41% is, is daunting. But let's, let's dig into the why. I, I think the key to the why is that changing majors, that not having a rudder in the water. Um, many students we know, once they, they land on that major that they know is right for them, then they realize that the college that they're in is not the right place to study that major. So then the option is you have to transfer, right? And so the credits may or may not go with you. So each of those choices has the opportunity to extend the amount of time that that student is in college, which extends, of course, someone writing checks for that. And the other part that, that happens, I, I think it's important to talk about this too, it really erodes the confidence of a student. So once they're away from us and they're on this college campus and all around them, people seem to be honing in on what they wanna do each semester that they don't have a sense of where they're going at the end of college. Um, and college moves very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, that really, I think those, those realities um, can create a really unfortunate situation for a student. And then the parents, we're looking at it from afar saying, oh my gosh, we have to fix this. We have to help our kiddo know where they're going at the end of college because the end of college is coming quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. And I think kids feel a lot of pressure. I know my nephew is not a junior in college. He was so stressed in high school about, I don't know what I want to do, Aunt Peggy. And I'm like, it's okay, you know, but a resource like you, I, I you know, I didn't know you then. And that kind of, that kind of dive, and we're going to talk about that. I'm getting ahead of myself, but diving yeah, yeah. into those sort of things is it's helpful across the board. It's not just about finding a career. It's learning more about yourself. It's just a big positive. But well, I think, yeah, go ahead. I, I think the question that I've always found that helps kind of anchor a student is for them to think about, you know, why am I going to college? Why does anybody go to college? And um, part of what I teach is about all the mechanical stuff involved with college prep. You know, we actually have a a portion of our business, you know, helping folks understand about all the educational options inside high school, um, ACT, SAT. We don't do prep, but we, we basically are teaching families about how this whole high school to college game works. And so in teaching students about that, I'll, I'll quickly say, so this stuff is pretty complex and difficult. What's ahead for you? It's totally worth asking the question, why does anybody go to college at all? You know, it doesn't guarantee anything. It costs a lot of money. And um, the vast majority of students will tell me it's to get a better job. So they know that. They did, did you find that with your son, that he knew that he had that sense that it was, that there was a job at the end of the process or there ought to oh, be yeah, a job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and I think that that age, these kids saw in 2008, potentially their parents lose a job. Right. or working two jobs because somebody else lost a job and worked these two jobs or you're out of a job. So they had a reality that, like you said earlier, when we were kids, you just went to college, studied whatever, and you got out and you got a job. It wasn't, you pulled out those want ads and you got a job. I mean, it was just very different than it is now. And I think the kids are aware of that. I think though, at the same time as parents, you know, we know it too but we can't, we really kind of can't help but just like cross our fingers and hope that as they move through those high school years, that they're gonna get to the end and magically lift their head up and say, this is what I wanna do. We all hope that, but um, as we all know, hope is not really a great strategy um, yeah. in the long term. Yeah. And a kid's nature during high school is to sort of put their head down and to take you know, the next quiz and to take the next test and to write the next paper, um, you know, to go to the next football game or party. And, and I don't blame them for that, they're, they're teenagers. So, yeah. so, so if we know that thinking about job is important, um, you know, I, I really would say that there is, um, that the, the issue is that there is a huge lack 
of career knowledge. There really is, our, our kids just don't know much about careers. I mean, your son probably knew a bit about what you did for a living, but often they don't have a great sense of the wide variety of careers that are out there and how they can pick which one might be right for them. Yeah, yeah. I, can you, and this might be really hard to quantify or give me an idea, but I'm curious as I'm listening to you, how many kids that you come up to, and maybe they don't come to you if they're very grounded, like my daughter, she was always into mission work and she was always like, this is what I love. She studied social work. She got her master's. She's a clinical so She never wavered through all the studies because sometimes the curriculums knock kids off their seat. Like, oh, this is what it means to be a doctor. I don't want to be a doctor anymore. I can't get through all this heavy duty science. So do you have any idea like what percent of kids our people are like that. I would think most are not. They have ideas based on watching yeah, television even and watching, I think when that CSI or whatever that show, all kids wanted to do that because they thought it was that, right? They still, they still, they still do. Um, so, <laughs> so that's the big one. But, but how many kids really have that? You know, that I, I meet a lot of people, especially for some reason, teachers, and they'll say, I knew, I always knew I wanted to be a teacher. That number is somewhere 10, 15 percent of all um, of all individuals kind of grow up knowing what they want to do. It's a small number. Yeah, um, that's what I figured. Yeah, and even those that know what they want to do, a lot of times um, they don't know enough about the job to really know for sure that all the things that they would do in the job really are a good fit for them. And so sometimes they you know, they may start in one form of that job and then sort of move next door to another form of that job, but it's a small number. The vast majority of students, um, they, they know very little about the working world and they have not taken the time to really think about who they are and what their strongest traits are. And yet at the end of high school, we're going to have these big decisions about picking a college, ultimately picking a major, because I always tell students they don't let you go to college without picking a major and then taking and passing all the required classes for that major. You actually have to do that. And then at the end of it, you know, we've already talked about these years going very quickly. At the end of it, they have to, they'll sit across the table from a hiring manager and they'll be moving toward that job. So those three big decisions happen at the end of high school. And I would even tell you that um, it's almost worthless to go on college visits if you have no idea what you want to study. And, and I'm sure you've been on college visits. They do an amazing job of selling their product. Oh, yeah. And they're they're yeah. going to tell you the most awesome things that they want you to hear. But if you don't have a sense of what, what school or what major your child wants to be in within that university, then you're just going to wander and, and it's going to be like, this is the best thing ever. But you have to dig deeper than that. Your kiddo is going there for a particular field that they're looking to study. And you need to go look at the lab equipment. You need to go talk to some professors sit in on a class, talk with students in that major, learn about graduation rate from that major, placement rate. So those things are really important. And, and again, that disconnect is just so strong um, that I, 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 without some help, our kids um, are gonna wander and perhaps be part of the wrong side of that first statistic that you shared about graduation rate. Yeah, yeah. For, yeah. yeah four years. Yeah, so if we want to dig into this a little bit more, what I'm what I'm hearing you say is exposing kids to careers, helping them understand their strengths. And I know that's something that you and your team spend time with families and with the kids on, on this sort of this area, right? So what tips do you have for parents and, and kids that, that are listening to this interview? What, but what can parents do to help make an impact in this area? We can do a lot. And, um, you know, I guess just a quick first detour, I would say that um, I always kind of thought that our schools would do this on some level, that our high schools and our middle schools would do this. And, and it's true that most states do have college and career readiness initiatives. But um, most families I know would tell you that those fall short of what 
really is necessary or needed for our kids. And so a lot of it kind of falls back on the family. So I think that's mm -hmm. just maybe just that recognition that if you're, if, if once again, you're crossing your fingers and hoping that your school is going to support your child well in, re, in regards to both self-assessment and career exploration, um, they're saddled with a lot and those things probably aren't going to be done um, effectively. So um, if, if we agree that at some point a kiddo is going to move, you know, formal education will stop, work will start, uh, I would really argue that the starting place of that thought process has to be who that kid is. Who is that student? Who am I? What, what am I good at? What do I like? What do I... Um, what do I prefer when given a choice? Those, those are some of my favorite questions. When you can kind of pose to a student, you know, would you prefer a day that looked like this or a day that looked like this? And they go, ooh, ooh, this. And then we have them finish that out. You know, I, I prefer this because, and you know, really getting them to think about and uncover, what do I struggle with? <coughs> Excuse me, what do I value? What, what's important to me? Just helping a student consider that. That's the hub of, all of the next decisions. So, so once mm -hmm. I know who I am, then I can, I can stand on that, on that firm foundation. This is what I know about me. And I can look out into the world of work and more effectively eliminate and hone in on potential work that would be a good fit for me. So that's, that's really what we do through this process that we call guided self-assessment. Um, one more quick detour. I mean, I'm sure you've taken online interest inventories or personality tests. Um, my own daughter sends me Buzzfeed quizzes all the time. Like, tell me your favorite fast food, you know, brand and I'll tell you what you should major in in college. I, I'm serious. There are like BuzzFeed quizzes like that. And, <laughs> and I wish those worked. Um, but most students that come to us have already taken some sort of online assessment of some kind. And it came back with, not the BuzzFeed ones, throw those out, but, um, but like the real ones can, can really create a, a, a confusing result for a student. It can be frustrating. They can sit down for an hour and a half, do this whole assessment, and it comes back and says they should be a funeral director. Or, I mean, I have kids tell me, I had a kiddo, one of the top kiddos at one of our area high schools. Hers came back and one of the suggestions was a bus driver. I'm not kidding. And her mom's like, she's, she's college bound. She's going to be amazing at what she does. And I'm thinking, did you like answer questions about transportation and like you like people interaction and they like put those together and like bus driver can you know yeah, so yeah. Like, those, those can be very confusing and so what we do is really um it's really kind of I don't want to say the opposite of that but it's 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 like the antithesis I guess it really it really is an alternate um way of helping a student understand what is important to them we interview them over time um, it's a third party that interviews them. So we all, we have trained facilitators who all use the same process. We sit with a student um, either in person uh, if we can, or of course, virtually if we right. need to, we're on the other side of the country. We walk through a series of interviews with that, that student. It's five interviews over two to three weeks of time. So they actually have homework that they're doing in between. They're thinking, they're making connections. So during that, that time where they're in the interview process, they, um, they're really being able to articulate and hopefully take ownership of what is important to them. We want them at the end to be able to say, I know I'm good at this. I know I like things that look like this and this. I know I struggle when I'm in this kind of situation. And this works to help counterbalance my struggle. Just that self-knowledge, that self-awareness is worth every penny. Right? Oh yeah, that's that's huge across the board. And I like how you do it over a relatively long period of time because some days you're tired, you're in a bad mood, you had a fight <laughs> with your parents before you go. So that you you show up with a different way of being. So it's not just a one one shot deal. And I think well, that's that's really it is powerful. Key. And in fact we we laugh because we often say that a student um 
there is a fair amount of what we call posturing in high school that happens, like where kids like take on a persona and they've been saying this thing for whatever it is. I'm going to be a doctor. Or I'm going to be an investment banker. And they say it and everyone around them pats them on the back and says, fantastic, that sounds awesome. We're so excited for you. But no one digs any further than that. And the kid can, can continue to posture that out there. Um, what we do, what we know is that through that extended interview process, posturing can't maintain over that, right? We're going to get to the real thoughts behind that. And as we scratch and probe and dig, um, in a very supportive way, it's going to reveal um, a, a bit more depth and truth to who that student is and help them connect to potential work that they'll love. So, so we do that work. We, um, I, did, I did bring along, this is like a sample report, um, just to give you an idea. This is like all the information that came out of the interviews. And then the back side of the report is a listing of the um, potential careers and why those careers came onto the radar. We also talk about Excuse me. We also talk about um, sometimes careers come on the radar that the student might want to really shy away from, and we can talk about why those. You know, mm -hmm. that, that like like if someone is not um, if they're not calm in a crisis, and they can kind of really talk about several examples of that, but they're thinking that they might want to be an EMT. You know, we might caution yeah. against that because that, I mean, yeah. that's, a very simple, that's a very simple example, but, but there are more subtle examples too. So we'll bring those up. But, but that process is what we call guided self-assessment. We've been doing that now for eight years. We love the work we do. Um, it, it is so impactful. Uh, we do a family meeting at the end where we share that information with the parents. Um, so because they're the ones that kind of pick it up and take it from there. Um, but right. kiddos can then really, the next step is to begin that career exploration yeah, that's Absolutely. what I that's what I was gonna ask about. So they go through this, they've they've got a much better sense. So then what's what's next? What are people, what are families, what are the kids doing next? So so there may be 18 specific careers that we give them a pointer toward. And we actually give them a big binder that's filled with information and supportive information to take those next steps. But the next steps would really then be to start, they're not going to know very much about those 18 careers because like we said earlier, there's a, they have no sense of what real world careers are like. So if we talk about forensic accounting might be, you know, a good thing for them to dig into. And here's why. The next step after we leave is to take the resources and materials that we've given them and to begin that career exploration. We love informational interviews. We love when a kiddo goes and finds, we actually will connect every student with their first professional to perform an informational interview. And then we go even further than that, Peg, because we learned that they, they, they would be like, well, I don't know what to ask on that yeah, informational yeah. interview. And we say, fantastic. Here's the list of questions that you can. So we try to remove every barrier. Um, but when they do those informational interviews, or they can even look up, you know, on YouTube and find six videos of, of someone who interviewed a forensic accountant who's talking about their job, that all works to fill in some of that base knowledge. Oh, I think this might be interesting. And oh, he talked about what he studied and she talked about where she went to college. I should probably look into those things. So that career exploration can then lead to a greater understanding what should really fall out of that would be the major um, research. What would I major in to be a forensic accountant? What would I major in, you know, to become a grant writer or a financial professional? So then those majors, um, th there's a lot of information about majors that you can find online. Our favorite resource is called the Book of Majors. It's a publication from um, the College Board, and we're so bummed they're not um, going to continue to update it. They updated it for years, and the 2018 was the last one. It's still a great book. We've got plenty of them, um, but that's a, that's an awesome resource for researching what majors are like. And then um, we'd really argue that the last thing, so if you've thought about yourself, and then you've thought about potential careers that fit, and then out of that came what majors should I per perhaps study while I'm in college? The last thing, the last thing would be where do I go to college? So which colleges are gonna match my family's criteria 
right? Cost, distance from home, right? Um, setting, right? Is it, is it, do I want to be in a city? Do I want to be in a suburb? All those other criteria, you know, are there college football games? Are there sororities, fraternities? Whatever else is important to me. And which one has a great reputation of, you know, teaching this major and moving people out the door to be that career that I'm interested in. So we really argue that a lot of the college process is kind of done backwards by families. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of initial focus on the college. And we would prefer that the initial focus would be on who is that student? What kinds of jobs could be right for them? What kinds of majors can support that career goal? And then what colleges meet our criteria? Yeah, and then there might be, yeah, and there might be colleges that are different that, that support that. And then that gets into, well, I feel more comfortable at a college like this versus a college like this. And then that personal fit comes into it. You've got the academic. And I always say the financial fit too. And it's funny because I tell people, follow, figure, go shopping after you've done this other stuff. And the going shopping, everybody does that first and they get, they love places. And I always say, you have no idea if it's affordable. And you would say, you have no idea what you want to study and if that's a good place to study that. So, but, but both of those, but both of those peg together, right? That the affordability and the can I even learn what I want to learn. The colleges love when you come there and get out of the car and they can do the whole dog and pony for you and you fall in love. I always yeah. say, I always say you fall in love, right? You, you eat the food, you, you went to a football game, you put, you, you get back to your car, you slap the bumper sticker on the car. Perhaps dad slipped into the tattoo parlor and got a tattoo while we were working <laughs> at the college somewhere. I, you know, I, I mean, once you do those things, it is so hard to undo yeah. that. So yeah. I, I, I I try to be really honest with families and, and go back to that question that we've asked hundreds, if not thousands of kids, why does anyone go to college? They will tell you it is to get a better job. And so if it really is about getting a better job, shouldn't we put that thinking at the forefront? Shouldn't yeah, we help yeah. our kids think about that? Yeah, because just a degree, if you walk into interviews and you don't have background and you don't have initiative and you don't have a story to tell it's going to be very hard to get that better job that they think that it's a, it's not just a foregone conclusion oh you've got the degree here's your job no in fact there are many studies that show that that your brand of college or even um you know your gpa those things matter so much less than did you gain the skills and the experience in that in that career field that will help that hiring manager know right. that you can really come in and hit the ground running. Yeah, I've been that hiring manager. I, it's all about reducing risk for them, right? And, and how are you gonna reduce risk? You're gonna do it primarily by showing that you've had co-ops, you've had research experience, you've had, um, I'm not sure, sure if you're familiar with co-ops, but they're almost like yeah. like an internship, but they're- Yeah, they're yeah, yeah, like Northeastern and Cincinnati are big into that, yeah. Northeastern, Cincinnati, Drexel, those are three yeah. of the big ones. Um, but they, um, so those kinds of, kids can do it other ways too, but those experiences in high school are gonna be exactly what you said. They're gonna differentiate that student. And I would even argue, they're gonna let that student make a more confident decision. They're going to, uh, they're gonna know that as they, we don't want them to get out into the working world and just get that paycheck and end up unhappy and unmotivated and they don't know how to get out of this. I, don't, I want every kid to drive to their job when they've got their first jobs in their 20s and to almost be like chuckling like, I can't believe I get to do this. Yeah, work. yeah. To do this. Yes, there's always what we call toilet cleaning um, in every job, there's stuff that you oh, don't sure. want to do every job. Um, but if you can find a job that things really do, they're a good fit for you. It's challenging. It, it matches your personal traits. That's the best ever, right? That's yeah, what we yeah. want for our kids and to not live in our basement. Did I mention that too? That's oh, yes. Maybe oh, that's, yes. Maybe that's, maybe that's Maybe that's just me that I want. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm in the same. I'm in the same boat with you on that path. Yeah. And so, you know, doing this exploration in high school and when you're a college kid, 
is is a much better plan than saying, oh, I'm starting that exploration when now I have rent and I, you know, I have food costs and it makes it easier on the individual as well. And then to your point, I love that, that they're driving to their first job and they get to go there. It's not, I think there's a lot of people in this country that are just not literally punching in and out, but you know what I mean? They're punching in and out and they, pro- I'm sure they have genius in them that, that, and passion around something, but it's buried. And now this is just what they have to do, not what they get to do. And when you're younger, you have less pulls on you financially. So figure all that out and kind of explore. I, I, when my son graduated, the business school graduation, the dean said, it isn't a it isn't a, a ladder. It isn't a job ladder anymore. It's really a, a job jungle gym. And so the, these millennials, they they're changing jobs a lot. But it's great to go through the exploration ahead of time. And you're going to change, but at least you're landing somewhere where you're not. What you're saying, you work with kids on. That's what a lot of people do in their first job, and they say uh, no, and they start exploring then. That's a lot more challenging than exploring in high school and then as a college kid with different experiences, you know. So I, I guess when I when I look at that student in high school, really taking a moment and looking inward and thinking about what's important to them and who they are, taking stock of that and really taking ownership of that, I view that process that families um, when families say, yes, we would love to do this guided self-assessment process for our kiddo, I really view that as a gift. They are giving their child a gift of understanding who they are, and that gift can be the key that unlocks doors to their future, the right doors to their future, just by knowing who I am and what's important to me. Yeah, and it's a great <laughs> mental health. It, it yeah. just To say it's positive for mental health is an understatement, and as we know, there's some mental health challenges with this demographic. It's very sad nowadays, but there is, and this can this can help in that way too. So it's a double it's a double win. So I think that was a great last statement. So if there's we talked about, I mean, you've shared so much and it's been great. So if there's like one one thing, and it doesn't have to be something you already said, but just one takeaway that you want people, I kind of have some ideas based on what you said, but if there's one takeaway or two that you want them to remember from our chat, what would that be? So I would say find a way to help your student um, take stock of who they are, whatever it is. um, Could parents do that by just asking questions of their kiddo while they're driving, helping them evaluate. Absolutely. Um, Could it be done with those BuzzFeed quizzes that my daughter sends me? You know, there might be some value that comes from those or or from another um, online assessment. Just uh, maybe it's guided self-assessment. I think just helping your kiddo cut through that posturing or that those question marks that I talked about over the head, ha- having them really understand who they are and what their strengths are, that would be one. You know, the second one we didn't really talk about, but it, it's pivotal as well. It just wasn't um, applicable per se to this conversation. Um, the second one would be helping students engage with things during high school that they can um, try on. So like if they identify kind of early on that they have an interest in forensics, find a way for them to really poke at that, to try that on. They can go to a camp, they can take a class, um, they could even do a shadow, you know, something that helps them because of it, that's cutting through the posturing. Again, if I just posture and say, I'm going to be a forensic science, but I've never done anything to actually engage with that then at some point you're gonna engage with that. And I'm a big believer in bringing that experience as forward as possible, right? Bringing it back on the timeline. If you're a sophomore in high school and you have an interest, find a way to engage in that interest. And high schools give our kids lots of ways to do it. Yeah, okay, that's great. Good. Um, Yeah, so can you just take a minute just to close up here, you're offering a free gift to our listeners. Um, can you just explain to them what what that is? 
For sure. So we, we put together actually uh, just for this audience, this is something, this is a, a brand new piece that we had not had before, but it, it is a set of tips with associated resources that are going to help families know how to engage in that self-assessment and career exploration process. So oh, it's just perfect. A, a, it is, it is a great starting place. It could be just enough that every family needs um, to get them to kind of get the ball rolling, you know, to get mm -hmm. started. Um, and if there's something we can do to help beyond that, uh, great. If there's, if we can direct you toward another resource, we, we do that too. We encourage families to call us with quick questions. But the, um, that little tip sheet can be found on um, our website at a specific URL. It's gettingatthecore.com slash journey. <clears throat> Once again, sorry, I have a little bit of a cold today. I'm gettingatthecore.com slash journey. So that will um, Yeah, and actually that link for the listeners, that link is right on the page where you click to listen to our interview. So you can just click there, it'll take you right to their site and you'll be good to go. So that sounds, that sounds like a wonderful start because I know when I listen to stuff and I get all charged up, it's like, all right, I want to go, I want to go. Now what? What's yeah. the next thing? So now you've provided that. So that's, that's perfect. So I, I encourage people that are listening, you know, jump, jump on, you know, move forward, um, grab and go because it's, it's awesome. So Beth, thank you so much for your sharing. Did you have some well, to say? I think what you're doing is amazing. This forum um, for families is really, really wise and great. And the fact that you're, you know, giving this away and supporting families in this way, it's so needed and such a good thing. I hope you feel great about 2020 and what you've done to help so many families. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really, I'm proud of it. And I'm really excited to to be able to offer this. It's just, to, that was my whole mission to just have this resource with people like you that know what you're doing, where parents can get guided through all these different pieces of the puzzle, because as you know, there's many pieces. So yeah, it's, and it's yeah. been awesome for me because I get to meet new people and there's just wonderful people really impacting families. So it's, it's well, all thank good. You again. Yes, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Okay, yeah. Pleasure's all mine. And thank you everybody for being here and enjoy the rest of your day.